I'm still learning. You have, have expressed a lot of emotion. I remember seeing you at the Spectrum in a Travis Arrow fight, leaping into the air after a, after a victory, after a big win. I'm wondering if the, some of the unpleasant things that have happened have also had an emotional effect on you, and it's been kind of tough recovering. Oh, yeah. You know, I had one big emotional problem uh, in Las Vegas, and uh, it still haunts me. So, you know, it's still on my mind, and uh, I got... Uh, bad, bad thing done to me, which was, uh, you know, it, it, it wasn't uh, a thing that should have happened to me, you know, and they, nobody did anything about it. They let the guy come in and do whatever he wanted to, and, uh, and that was the end of that. Just moved to another city and just, you know, as far as the Eagles, you know, we don't feel like playing New York because we don't like the officials and just pulled out, you know, and then done in boxing, we just moved to another city. You're talking about the Victor Galindez fight, the second. Oh, yeah. What does Mike Rossman have to do now to get back to that championship form in terms of technical boxing and so forth? Well, yeah, anything. If he wants to win title, he'll keep winning. He has to keep winning. Uh, like I say, it's not like uh, hockey, baseball. You lose a game, well, we got tomorrow, we got next week. You lose a fight, man. It's, it's almost curtains for you. You know, everybody's always counting you out, and that's where the word comeback always comes in. Is your game plan now to... to to try and not tackle anything too tough right away, or, or how do you want to approach that? No, I'm not looking for no easy fights. Uh, uh, I'm looking for uh, maybe uh, guys that I can learn off of too. Experienced guys that know a little more maybe than me, and uh, that'll get me back, just to get start getting sharp again. I was pretty sharp in my uh, first fight after the nine months layoff, so uh, that helped me. And uh, hopefully after this win here, uh, you know, just keep going. Look for somebody else, look for somebody else, and... Uh, In a few moments, it's Al Bolden. Do you know much about him? Not real. I heard he's almost the same height as me, and, uh... So, he's slick. He's gonna come out. He wants me to fight his fight, but uh, I don't think I will. Best of luck to you. There's an awful lot of boxing uh, fans in Philadelphia that want to see Mike Rossman back there on top. All right. Thanks. Mike Rossman getting ready to meet Al Sugar Bolden in the ring right now, another promising light heavyweight whose name you'll certainly recognize. That's Michael Spinks. Michael Spinks is a, is a ghost out of Michael Rossman's past because when Rossman pulled out of a rematch with uh, Ramon Ronquillo, Spinks destroyed the kid. And getting ready now to enter the ring, the WBA light heavyweight champion, formerly called Eddie Gregory, now Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. In he is a tough cook. Yes, he is. Good fight coming up when he meets Matthew Saad Muhammad one of these days. And uh, the one time Matthew Franklin, now Matthew Saad Muhammad, the WBC champion. And uh, of course, he is the fellow who had the two great fights against Marvin Johnson and was able to KO Marvin. If Matthew and Marvin made a career out of fighting each other and it looked for a while as though they might, then neither one of them would have lasted very long. The World Boxing Council's light heavyweight champion of the world. There are a lot of very fine light heavyweights these days, and we're seeing a whole bunch of them right here. Matthew Saad Muhammad. Light heavy and welterweight divisions at the moment are the best in boxing. Eddie Gregory, now Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. Of course, Marvin Johnson. This Michael Spinks. This is the main event of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. And is scheduled for 10 rounds, and it's in the light heavyweight division. The judges, Richard F. Murray and William Castro. The timekeeper at the bell, Roosevelt Gilbert. Counting for the knockdown seconds, referee Milo Savage. Entering at this time, ladies and gentlemen, the man in charge of this main event, referee Tony Perez. Introducing the principals in the red corner. Wearing the blue trunks with the red and white trim. Weighing in at 174 and one half pounds. The knockout specialist from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Al Sugar Bolden. Bolden. Al Bolden. 14 knockouts. And his opponent in the blue corner. Wearing the blue trunks with the white and black trim, weighing it at 174 and three quarter pounds, the former white heavyweight champion of the world from Turnersville, New Jersey. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Mike Rossman. Rossman. 
big Rossman crowd here. Obviously, uh, Michael draws very well in this area. He lives in Turnersville, which is only about uh, a half hour, 40 minutes up the road. He's always been very popular in this section. All right, Al Sugar Bolton, he's a veteran, 34 years old. He's been around, uh, I can remember him, at least 10 years. 22, 13, and 1 with 14 KOs. Has a win over Yaki Lopez very early in his career. Mike Rossman. Mike without the uh, what used to be very familiar Jewish bomber uh, image well, uh, and trademark. I think you have to bomb some people in order to carry the nickname, Jim, and he hasn't done that lately. I think if he gets himself a few knockouts, then he'll resurrect the name. Bolden's a tall fellow. Looks to be a little taller than Rossman. Bolden, uh, the blue trunks with that orange stripe. Mike Rossman, the blue with the white. Al Bolden from Pittsburgh. Fought out of the Washington, D.C. area for a spell. Now back into the Pittsburgh area. I think he moved down to Washington when he was a sparring partner for Bob Foster, who was headquartered down there. Well, then he's been hit. Oh, yeah. Well, he fought Foster twice uh, and got knocked out both times in uh, regular bouts. Looks like he carries his left hand a little low. He does. I've seen a lot of fighters do that. Uh, it can become a problem, I think, as they get older because your reflexes are a little He slower. snaps that left into the jaw of uh, Rossman that time. Landed cleanly with it. Looks like he's got some speed, hand speed, at least early on. Michael's not showing a great deal of upper body movement, which uh, might be a cause for concern as the fight wears on. It's that upper body movement that enables you to get out of the way of those left hands. Mike Rossman, we've seen him at his greatest, and I guess we've seen him at his uh, lowest in terms of uh, his boxing career, and that low uh, came not too long ago. Uh, one year ago, I guess, against Ramon Ronquillo up in uh, the Meadowlands in North Jersey. He was a very confused young man at that time, going just eight weeks into working with his third trainer in three years, Jimmy Arthur. They've now been together for approximately a year. Have you seen much alteration in style with all the different trainers that he's had? Is, any, is Jimmy Arthur doing things now that are make Mike Rossman any different? Well, I think that Arthur was working to a great extent on a different way of punching. Uh, he wants Mike to get a little closer to his man before he fires. He wants him to work a little more in combinations. Uh, I don't, the biggest problem Michael's had as he's changed trainers is that uh, each one begins to teach him things that, to do things that he's been doing, but do them differently. And that becomes very difficult uh, after you've been champion of the world. Round number one, Al Bolden, blue trunks, orange stripe, to the right of your screen. Mike Rossman, the stalking fighter now, blue with the white trim. Mike always has been a stand-up type fighter. Carries both hands high, as you can see. Normally, he's for the uh, Victor Galindez fight when he went inside. He's normally been in his best on nights when he remembers to throw that left jab a lot. Work from behind it. Round number one. Mike that's Michael. He turned pro way back in uh, 1973. I say way back because he was only 17 years old at the time. I think he was uh, just 17, too. And then five years later, he was champion with a, a WBA champion with a win over Victor Galendez. He had that uh, defense at the spectrum against Aldo Travesero, which he won in a six-round TKO. And then came back and lost to uh, Galendez down in New Orleans on the uh, Muhammad Ali Leon Spinks card in a fight that had previously been postponed when Galindez walked out of the ring in Las Vegas. And that, uh, as we talked with, as you saw in the interview, we talked with Michael today, that's one thing that's really bothered him a long time throughout his career and has made him kind of a bitter person against the so-called boxing underworld. Yeah, the boxing powers. He, uh, I think he calls them the underworld. All right, we're in round number two. Michael Rossman, blue trunks, white stripe. Al Sugar Bolden, the taller of the two. Took uh, Mike Rossman 10 rounds on July 12th to uh, defeat Don Addison here at Resorts. 
Well, he had been off for a long time. He'd been off since the previous September, which makes it, uh, what, eight, nine months. And uh, I think he had a lot of problems with Rust. Uh, it was the first fight that he had had uh, with Arthur since they'd had time to work together. And I think Michael was trying out a lot of things that night. Left hand by Bolden, partially blocked. Bolden, Bolden looks slick. He looks like he's, uh, like he's a veteran of 12 years in the ring against some very good fighters. And he lands the left hand. Counter good the counter left. punch, yeah. And he gets hit with a nice left right to the midsection. I think Rossman's corner has probably told him the man's 34 years old, go to the body often. Try to break it down. It's Mike Rossman and Al Bolden. Earlier tonight, Marvin Johnson, four round KO winner over Lee Royster. And we saw Upper Darby's Mike Pachotti eke out a close 10 round victory over Curtis Taylor in a fine fight. No one, of course, expecting uh, Sugar Bolden to win this fight. This is a fight that the uh, State Athletic Commission might not have allowed two years ago when Rossman was a uh, was fresh off, of, you know, was a young champion at the top of his game, and Bolden was just a 32 year old journeyman. But uh, situations change. Bolden is getting his licks in periodically. Nothing damaging at this stage, but uh, Mike Rossman is allowing himself to get hit, but then he always was a fighter who took, took his punches. He does get hit. He gets hit too much a lot of times, I think. Uh, I spoke a little earlier about the upper body movement. Uh, a lot of times he just doesn't do anything to get himself out of the way. And he just got hit there with a lead right. Got a little left coming back, too. That ends the round. And we remind you that you're watching Boxing from Resorts International, brought to you exclusively on Prism. And we're going to be right back. It's September, and the days are dwindling down to a precious few in another exciting baseball season. You can enjoy one of the key remaining games on PRISM when the Phillies host the Montreal Expos Friday night, September 26th at 8 p.m. That's 34-year-old Al Bolden. Passing up the stool here between rounds two and three. Getting his instructions from Chuck Runzo. Holden spends a lot of time in the gym in Pittsburgh. He works with youngsters uh, quite a bit, uh, teaching them to box in an unofficial sort of capacity. And by comparison, his opponent is a youngster tonight. 10 years difference in age, 34 for Bolden, 24 for Rossman. Of course, Rossman with a much more glamorous career and maybe unglamorous too. Bolden's staying very cool and he's counter punching very well. Letting Rossman lead, taking advantage of the movement of, the, of Rossman's, uh, the direction of Rossman's punches to come with something from the other side. A lot of folks think that uh, Mike Rossman's troubles mostly now are mental, as he just gets hit with a very strong right hand. So that was not mental. I think. He's got a little cut, Jim, under the right eye, on the cheek. A couple of sharp right hands, and that uh, he does have a nice gash uh, underneath that right eye. Yeah, that was a counter left hook, I think, that came in after the right hand, and uh, 
It's uh, not in a place that's going to bother the eye. May make him look a little messy before this is over. Now Sugar Bolden having himself a strong round here. Lands another right hand. Rossman came back with a good clean right there. One of the questions is going to be, you know, if Bolden chooses to go to war, how, long, how well his legs will hold up. Round three, a surprising right hand by Bolden has uh, staggered and cut Mike Rossman. Boy, both fighters, both the uh, stars of tonight's show, uh, suffering early cuts in yeah, their that's bouts. Right. Marvin was cut in the second round, Michael in the third. Glancing left hook by Bolden. Rossman can't seem to get anything started, any combinations at this point. Good left jab, and now there's a little bit of a trickle, I think, above that Good cut, Bob, uh, further up on the eye. Al Bolden. Bolden's ripping at him now, uh, picking his shots, going for the head, going for the face, still standing in the corner, showing us, I guess, that those 34-year-old legs are still good. Round four coming up. We're going to have a look at some slow motion action in round three, which was a strong one for Al Bolden. Let's see if we can pick up some of those shots that he connected. There's one. That's his best yeah. one. He lets Rossman lead with the left, comes right in with that right hand. There he gets a right uppercut and a left, and I think that was where the cut occurred. Yeah. Rossman trying to fight back a little bit now under the pressure. Round four coming up, and... Uh, Michael doesn't look sharp, Jim. He's having trouble getting his punches uh, where he wants them. Bolden's letting him lead and counter-punching him, which used to be Michael's strong point. And uh, Sugar Bolden opens up with a lead right that graces the uh, top of uh, Mike Rossman's head. A surprising fight because we certainly remember Mike Rossman when he was a much superior fighter and it's hard to uh, envision somebody losing that when they're only 24 years of age. He started very young. Gets hit hard there. He started very young, as you noted earlier, Jimmy, was 17. And there is a school of thought that that's too young, that a, that a young man's body isn't fully uh, matured at that point, and that you can take a lot out of him in fights at that age. Of course, Michael tell you, well, I was going to fight amateurs anyway, so I might as well made a buck or two at it. That's true, but there's a large difference between three two-minute rounds and ten three-minute rounds against a world-class competition. This is the fourth round as former light heavyweight champion Mike Rossman on the comeback circuit, finding himself a tough old trial horse here in Al Sugar Bolton. Good left hand by Michael. I think he heard him. The knees dipped just a little bit. Bolden did uh, hold on now. He is holding on. Trying to catch his uh, strength. And he lands a left. He knows the tricks, Bob. Yeah, he's a slick guy. Well, he was in Philadelphia in 1970 for two fights, and that's 10 years ago, and he'd already been fighting two years at that point. And he has been in with some very good people. Lost to most of them, but you learn that way. Rossman trying to put him on the ropes and work that body, but Bolton just ties him up, turns him around, gets out of there. Mike Rossman uh, having uh, the worst of this exchange so far. He's got hit again with a combination. Yeah. No reflexes, apparently. 
that's you know there, there's no attempt to get out of the way of those things it's a little worrisome uh, in so young a guy He also, Jim, seems to be concentrating on what he has to do offensively and instead of just doing it instinctively. That's the bell ending round four. We remind you once again that you're watching boxing from Resorts International, exclusively on Prism, and we're going to be right back. I just want to do a... Osman's corner working on his cut. I see we have some slow motion here. Nice. It's a hard combination. Left, right, over, and Rossman was simply unable to get out of the way. I started to say the people in uh, Rossman's corner working on the cut. He's got a very good cut man in Eddie Aliano. Should keep that from being a factor in the fight. The big factor right now is uh, Al Sugar Bolton, who's giving Mike Rossman uh, plenty. I think Al Sugar Bolton might even be a little surprised at his success at this point. I talked to him last week, and he was the most confident-sounding man in the world. Just moved in with a left uppercut there. Has let Rossman fall toward him and stepped into it. Al Bolin, again, a good left. I think they both both missed that time. They locked arms on that exchange. But. Well, I guess that explains why some judges score differently than others, because they thought he connected. You see things differently from two seats next to each other. That one didn't miss. He seems to be beating Mike to that first punch, and then uh, Mike seems to have to untrack himself from that, and by the time he does, he can't get anything going. This is part of what I was saying earlier. He, that Rossman seems to be concentrating too hard on what he's trying to do offensively. He's not doing it instinctively. It's as though he has to think that the right hand follows the left. While he's thinking, Bolton pops him. There it is again. And a little bit of blood now trickling from the lips of Mike Rossman. He's going to feel the effects of this fight, win or lose. Yes. With that uppercut that he caught earlier, the left uppercut, cut the lip. And Rossman leading with the left, but nothing coming behind it. And the left doesn't have any snap at the moment. It's just sort of pawing out there. Fifth round here, scheduled for 10. Al Sugar Bolden on your right with the orange stripe on his blue trunks. For the most part, beating Mike Rossman to the punch, and I would have him ahead, and rather significantly at this stage. I think he's winning the fight right now. You'll notice that the, Rossman does his best uh, scoring when they get close to each other, and he doesn't have to work out any sort of a scenario. Raymond Ronquello, and then in a rematch of that Ronquello bout, pulled out of it. So there has not been... Uh, much to speak glowingly about in the past year or so for uh, young Mike Rossman. And this is a fight he has to win tonight. If he should lose to another non-contender at this point, the people who rank fighters and decide who's going to get shots at the title are just going to write him off at 24 or now 24. And Al Bolden, who you've not heard much about, would uh, this would be a great shot in arm for his career. Or at least... Uh, propel him into a couple of more nice paydays or he'd, nicer ones. Right, he'd make a few bucks off it. That's about it. He's uh, at 34. I don't think he's got great prospects at, at a title fight unless one of the champions is looking for something he doesn't think will be too tough. They've been known to do that.
just hanging on. Bolden just holding the arm under there so Rossman can't get it loose. Oh, he digs a left hook right square on the chin of Mike Rossman. He is catching Mike Rossman coming in almost at will with that initial left hand. With a lot of punches. Did it again. Fired with the right to another left. Rossman banging back again without having to think about it. Bolden has 14 knockouts among his 22 wins. He did KO a chap by the name of Gary Alexander in eight rounds in his last fight. That out in West Virginia. Right above us. I know, he doesn't look to me like, he looks strong. He doesn't look like he's got knockout kind of power, but you can break a man down, wear him down until you get a technical knockout. It shows up on the record, the same as a KO. Tony Perez, the referee, as Mike Rossman uh, bops a right hand on top of the head of Bolden and immediately lets Bolden back him into the corner. Bolden has not gone too much for the body. No, I didn't, uh, from what, I, what he had told me, I didn't expect that he would go a great deal on the body. He's, he's a slick kind of a guy. He's going to pick his shots at the head, counter punch. Ooh. Hard right hand. Right, Mike Rossman almost says, all right, let's do that. I'll take yours and you take mine. But he's hurt right now. He's hurt. And I think he's getting a little discouraged, Jim. There's the bell. Two strong punches at the end of the bell. And, uh, you know, a little uh, exchange glances there. Al Bolden, I don't think, didn't, didn't count seven. Al Bolden, who usually throws the first punch in any exchange and lands it. Rossman in trouble now. He's getting hit. I think this, this fight is very nearly over, Jimmy. And what a uh, crushing blow to the career of Mike Rossman this would be. Yes, it would. If he does not only lose, but lose in the manner that uh, seems to be uh, shaping up here. Al Bolden cautiously looking for his shots. And he's getting plenty of them. He's a veteran. He knows better than to take any unnecessary chances. He's not finding Rossman difficult to hit, particularly in the head. Round seven. There's a right by Rossman. Right hand. How much does Mike have left? Because he's taken some shots. He's strong and he's still only 24, but he has taken some awfully brutal shots. He's going to have to get a perfect right hand over and really hurt the guy to get himself out of this trouble, I think. Bolden landed a left-right combination just moments ago, too. Watch now as he gets off. He usually lands that first punch. There it is. A left hook in that case. Mike Rossman just can't block a punch. No, there's no defense at all. And this is what's making Bolden's job easy. Bolden's not worrying a great deal about his own defense. He simply, uh, he knows he's going to get the first punch in, and he knows that once he hits Rossman, then he doesn't have to worry about getting hit back right away. Al Bolden, Mike Rossman. Round number seven, and this is a surprising fight, fans. Uh, so far, a, uh, appears decisive edge to Al Sugar Bolden, 34-year-old veteran from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The question we would raise now is how much does Mike Rossman have in his heart and how much does uh, Al Bolden have uh, condition-wise? Yeah, Rossman caught him with a good left hand along the ropes there a minute ago, and uh, I thought I saw a little sag. He, he's maybe getting tired. We're into the seventh round now. And he is 34. Rossman going to the body whenever he can, get a chance.
There's round seven. A little bit of a better round. It was a Mike pretty Rossman. decent round. It was a pretty decent round uh, of boxing because Rossman was giving him uh, a lot more. In action here. That was round seven. Here it is. Left, Ooh. right combination. That started the round. And that has been, uh, those two punches have been kind of symbolic of what Mike Rossman has been faced with throughout almost the entire seven rounds. Rather cool, calm, and collected, Sugar Bolden. Yeah, he's a veteran. He, uh, he had absolutely no respect for Rossman. I know when I talked to him earlier. Okay, round number eight, and Mike Rossman has got to get it going and land some kind of big action here. And also stay out of the way which he has not been very successful at. At this point, I think he may have to just concentrate on nailing the guy. He can't get careless. But... Marvin Johnson earlier won his fight four rounds. KO over Lee Royster. Then we saw Mike Fashodi in a very hard-fought and narrow 10-round decision over Curtis Taylor. Oh, another hard combination. Right hands by Bolden again. Two of them. Missed that time. A little disgusted at himself. His accuracy has been excellent, and there he is back again. Well, I must say, Bob, that I am quite surprised. Well, I'm surprised, too, because I didn't really think that, that Michael had slipped to this point, that he was going to have this much trouble against a 34-year-old man. But I did feel coming in that one of the interesting things about this fight was it was going to tell us something about Rossman. We haven't really known too much lately. As you've said several times, he's been an enigma. What we've learned here tonight indicates that... Uh, unless he can be totally restructured. And I don't know if he can do that with a 24-year-old ex-champion. His career may be uh, approaching the close, certainly of its glory period. He just got nailed for the right hand. Again. He can't get off first, Bob, and uh, Al Bolin continues to land uh, that initial punch. And as you just pointed out a while ago, uh, by the time uh, Mike recovers from that, he doesn't have anything uh, left to do. Rossman landed a good one, two to the body. Bolden came back with a right to the head. Al Bolden has landed a lot of punches tonight. Yes, he has. And they've been clean punches, damaging kind of punches. They hurt you. This is round eight. And so far it's been, in my opinion anyway, Al Sugar Bolden's fight, but we've got light heavyweights up there and they can uh, do some one punch things that can turn a fight quickly around. Michael needs a one punch to turn things around right now, Jimmy. There it is. That's round eight. Al Bolden a little bit confused about his corner. And he's taking a rising from the fans. People looking for rays of hope in the Rossman corner. Yeah. The ones he's beaten. Right. Okay, let's see. Mike Rossman looks like he wants to get something going. Not going to do it that way. Well, he went in and got nailed. At this point, he looks as though he has no idea how to penetrate Bolden without getting hit. Ninth round of a tough, hard-fought, but I guess, in my opinion, one-sided fight 
that one side has been leaning toward Al Sugar Bolden, who has landed repeatedly to the head of Mike Rossman. But uh, as you can see right now, uh, Bolden a little bit tired. He's tiring, but he knows that he only has to get through, uh, what, another five minutes maybe? We're having a bit of video problems back home. Please bear with us on that. As Al Sugar Bolden and Mike Rossman exchange left hands now here in round nine. Bolden giving back better than he thought. Right hand by Bolden. And Michael came across with a left hook over the top of the arm that time which was a decent punch. Certainly apologize for those video problems. Hope we have them cleared up momentarily. Rossman just kind of rushing at him now, Jim, as though that's the only way he can get inside. Him. Even when he does come in, he doesn't have much in the way of a combination going, and Bolton is able now to tie him up before he was just bopping him with the uh, lefts and rights. Uh, Bolden's been, uh, he's been taking the one shot, throwing the counter punch, and then tying up. Rossman's mouthpiece just went flying out. Rossman comes on a little bit with a right hand to the body, and the crowd gets very excited. Now he lands a right hand to the head of Bolden, but Bolden comes back. Now they're really they're going starting, at it. They're starting to war a little bit, and this is something Bolden really shouldn't do. It's the one way a 34-year-old man can lose this fight. Ninth round, nearing the end of the ninth round. Mike Rossman just trying to dig way down now and find something. He needs a knockout punch. Al Bolden hanging on. Oh, a very right strong hand. right hand by Rossman. Bolden raises his hands at the end of the round to indicate that it's no problem, but that was far from no problem. That was a strong overhand right. Very solid punch, but the simple fact that Bolden had enough presence of mind to do his little uh, thing out there, raising his hands for the crowd, is, a, is an indication that he wasn't uh, separated from his senses in any way by the shot. Let's see if that can inspire Mike Rossman to put something together here in round 10. Got to be two tired fighters. I would think that uh, Al Sugar Ray Bolden has definitely a tired fellow over there. Uh, when you get hit as often as Mike Rossman's gotten hit tonight, I guarantee you're tired by this point. Once again, we apologize for some video problems that we're having. We're in round number 10. It's Mike Rossman and Al Sugar Bolden. The crowd is up on its feet now, recognizing that Mike Rossman, to really save his career, I would guess, has to really come on here in the 10th and final round. A mouthpiece goes flying. I didn't see whose it is. I'm not sure either. I, I think it's Michael's. Yes, it is. And he takes the right hand. And he lands That's the right hand. And Bolden is hurt. Bolton is staggered by a right hand, and Rossman just plods on and drives him back to the rope. And Bolden with Bolden the counter, right. right. Rossman trying desperately to knock his man out, and he needs a knockout. Just at this point, he's just trying to beat him to pieces. Lefts and rights, Bolden lands now. Rossman just coming on, wants to land a right. Bolden a little tired, his left hand is down. Apologize once again for the video problem. Bolden buying a little time now, tying up. We're having Michael. It. Mike Rossman lands, fights. Bolden is hurt. Four good punches by Rossman. Two to the body, two to the head. Rossman mixing his punches, left and right. Bolden backs off. Okay, Bolden very tired. Rossman coming on, takes a right hand. Lefts and rights, two men now swinging away in the center of the ring. Bolden hanging on a bit. He blocks the left. Now they're holding each other in the center of the ring as Tony Perez separates them. Right above us now. Mike Rossman lands a right, hard right. and a left, and a very hard right. Rossman coming on. This would be an incredible victory for him if he would pull this out. He was battered for nine rounds, most of nine rounds, and he's getting the best of it here in the tent. Has left, he has Bolden against the rope. 
Bowling. Bowling hanging on desperately. Bowling just trying to He's going to fall down. Mike Rossman has put his man down in the 10th round. Bowling right back up now at the count of five. Here we go. Rossman swinging wildly. Trying to land. He does land. And down goes Bowling again. This is an incredible ending. Bowling right in front of us. Going to take the mandatory eight count. He's, he's not getting out. up. I don't believe he's he can't get up. up. Mike he Rossman has up. just fallen down in the center of the ring. He can't believe what is happening. I think Mike Rossman has practically passed out from exhaustion. And the surprise and the excitement and the whole incredible ending to this really, really incredible fight. Jimmy, I, uh, I really wonder. I watched Bolden there sitting on one knee, and he did not make any effort to get up on that count. He was on one knee. He stayed on one knee after the count, shook his head a little bit. I think he could have gotten up. Apparently, he simply did not want to take any more punishment. An absolutely incredible ending. Here's Rossman walking around now, being uh, cheered by this obviously pro-Rossman crowd here. Jimmy getting up there, trying to get close to Michael. Over in the corner with his brother Andy DiPiano. Being hugged by Andy DiPiano, his, uh, his younger brother, and now going over to congratulate Al Bolden on uh, a very, very tough fight. You can see by Rossman's face that uh, he had a difficult time. Very much a Rossman crowd here at the Resorts International Theater tonight. of the 10th round, coming from way behind, the winner by a knockout, Mike Rossman! Rossman! 2.32 of the 10th. Less than half a minute left in the round when Rossman scores a knockout to save this fight. may have questioned your boxing ability at this point, but no way anybody in the world is going to question your heart after what I thought was an absolutely incredible fight. Well, uh, he got a slick style. Uh, my trainer said, throw right hands on the knee, left toes over top, and I just couldn't get off. And uh, I just kept trying it, trying it, trying it. And it started to work, and I hit him with some real good hard shots in the end, which slowed him down. What was said to you in your corner, say, around round eight or nine, when it was obvious to everybody in here that you were in some trouble? Go get him, baby. You want you. And I, I've, I've been behind in fights before and came on, so uh, I just dug down real deep, man. I got everything I had to go and uh, went after this guy. This has got to give you some great confidence. I guess you've worried about where you've been lately in fighting, but going back to the gym now, you've got to feel very encouraged by the way this whole thing came out. Three is one.